My name is Venus with Galaxy Inc. And for this week's writing tip, I'd like to talk with you about early readers and chapter books, an introduction, if you will. And last week I talked about picture books, which we discussed were a certain size and certain shape. They had illustrations and stuff. Early readers and chapter books are very similar. They do have a lot of illustrations still because of the age group that it's geared towards. However, there are some limitations for writers, and since these are writing tips, I'd like to talk to you about what some of those limitations are and uh, why this is a challenging but also really rewarding uh, stage of development for, for young readers. The first thing that we need to do is, of course, to find what is an early reader or chapter book. Unlike uh, picture books where there's kind of an age range, when it comes to early readers and chapter books, it's really about reading level. So it doesn't matter, the child could be three, they could be six, they could be eight. If their reading level matches where you are in the early reader or chapter book, that is the, the age range or whatever. Um, anybody can read, of course, early readers and chapter books. There are different types of them. There are the step series, so or levels, if you want to call them that. DK has a series uh, called Step Into Reading, and there's like these different step one, step two, step three, and each one, of course, the level of reading difficulty gets harder and harder. Then there are, of course, the level books. There are also some books that maybe weren't written originally with the intention of being step books or early readers. Uh, but have kind of fallen into that category. A good example is Arnold Lobel's uh, Frog and Toad series. Uh, I think a lot of people are familiar with those because they've been around a long time. At this point, those are considered um, a step, step into reading kind of levels, level uh, early readers. Then there are the next level, uh, or I don't want to call them levels necessarily, there's the actual chapter books. These books are, you know, little tiny minuscule chapter books. They have anywhere from 8 to 15 chapters, um, sometimes longer, sometimes shorter. They have some illustrations, but kind of big blocks of text. Uh, there's a ton of different series out there that are produced by different publishers. There's the Magic Treehouse series, ABC Readers, or A to Z Mysteries. Uh, there is the Junie B. Jones and... Well, Junie B. Jones is more considered intermediate. We'll get to those in a moment. Uh, there's also her little brother, Stink. Those books are considered chapter books for sure. Uh, there are so many of these kind of little level books, what, what I consider chapter books. Uh, and then there are what I call the Bridger books, which I just mentioned a minute ago when I made my mistake. So the, the Bridger books are books that are a little higher level, usually third, fourth grade reading levels, usually about third grade reading level. Uh, they're usually shelved or, or put in with the juvenile fiction or middle grade or intermediate. That's kind of the, the different terms that are thrown around for that age, age group. Uh, those books are typically very small as well, uh, easier to read. Uh, but also kind of moving into these books that maybe don't have as many pictures in them or are heavier in text. And so those are kind of these good books to kind of bridge in between. So a young reader could, exam for example, start uh, with the kind of classic Dick and Jane stories, see the ball go, run, run, Jack, run, those kind of things. And then they can progressively get more difficult. So they go into Frog and Toad, and then they might move into like Stink, and then maybe up to his older sister, which is Judy Moody. Uh, and those are the kind of uh, varying stages of kind of these early readers. What makes them difficult to write is the language or vocabulary issues. So if you're working for a company like DK, you might be given a, a list of the words that you need to use in a level one book and the words you need to use in a level two book because teachers use these in the classrooms and, and they're used by parents to help supplement you know, reading levels and things. The kids haven't learned, you know, if they're just learning book and look and you give them the word trouble, they might not be able to read that, and so that shouldn't be in a level one book. It should be in a level two or three book. Uh, so as a writer, there are some limitations there, and they all have to do with, with vocabulary. But it doesn't mean that you can't have dynamic stories and interesting characters and, and create good books that kids are going to remember for a long time. 
we still talk about frog and toad books because they are good books and there are these really great books that i think kids remember reading when they were younger the magic tree house books are one of them uh, a lot of kids have also read um the, the American Girl series, which I consider to be Bridger books. They're really good because they kind of get kids engaged in in that that type of a book and getting used to reading and there's also some history in the back. Uh, good Bridger series. Another good Bridger series are some of the uh, um, Raw Doll books. The Twits is a really good one or Beverly Cleary and, and her Ramona series is also a really good series for kind of getting kids engaged in, in chapter books. I don't think that writers have to feel like they're limited, but it is a challenging age to write for because of some of those vocabulary words. It doesn't mean that occasionally you can't insert some hard words, but you have to think about it on different levels. If you're writing for a publisher, you're going to have a certain set of limitations that you wouldn't have if you were writing your own series just based off of you know a character that you created and, and built. Um, and then you have to target the age, the, the age range or the age levels. Uh, so if you're aiming for a third grade reading level, there are certainly certain words that you need to make sure are in there uh, so that teachers want to use them in the classrooms. And you need to make sure that you're, you're working towards it. There is also, I mean, I, I talked about working for a publisher. There are also curriculum stories that they create. I know when I was a kid, there was a series called Sing, Spell, Rain, and Write, and there were books. Um, for each of the levels or letters that the child was learning, but then they were also for book, little books for each of the um, the concepts. So learning about the you know vowel sounds, there was a book specifically for just learning vowels and things like that. So there is a whole wide range of books that you can write in this this level of reading. Uh, it is it is limited, but it is not limiting. And there are some fantastic characters that can, you can create and little stories and adventures. I do love The Magic Tree House because of that, introducing kids to various concepts. There's nonfiction and there's fiction. I've read fantastic uh, DC and Marvel superhero ones. So there is not really a limit to what you can have within your story, but again, limiting with vocabulary. Another thing I want to talk about when it comes to early readers and chapter books is some of the illustration issues. You, just like with picture books, you can hire an illustrator, you can illustrate it yourself, or the publisher will probably hire somebody to illustrate the book for you. Uh, those are the same options, they're still out there. Pay your, your illustrators if you're going to do that, you're, if you're going to do it yourself. Um, but the, the concepts are still kind of the same. and. The printing is less limited than this. Remember, you're still printing in eights, but don't worry about that so much. I want to encourage anybody who's thinking about writing for this, this reading levels to think beyond just simplistic or simple words and really challenge themselves to create good stories that will engage readers so that they will become lifelong readers because that's what we're doing. If you are creating books for children and you're writing early readers and you're writing chapter books, the goal is to create readers who will want to read for the rest of their lives. So let's hook them in with some really good stories that they can read that will challenge them but also engage them and allow them to become lifelong readers. Don't forget to press like and subscribe to my channel. We post new videos every Friday with writing tips for all types of writers. I hope you're, I've been Venus with Galaxy Inc. I hope your writing is out of this world.